Welcome back to BE 110 Continuum Mechanics. We're going to start to consider how material continua move and deform by considering a material point P in a body B0 in a material region R0 surrounding P at time t equals 0. And later, at time t equal t, the body is now B and the material region surrounding P is R. The position of P in the original reference state B0 is capital X and at time t equals t in B is little x and the difference between little x and big x is the displacement vector u. So we call the coordinates big X with components X sub R with respect to our frame of reference, the material coordinates. And if we were to write the motion as little x is a function of big X and T, then we would call this a material or Lagrangian description of the motion. The other way to consider the motion is to consider the coordinates in the current configuration. So the coordinates little x with components little x i in the same reference frame are called the spatial coordinates. And if we were instead to write the equations for the motion as big X is a function of little x and t, then we would call this a spatial or Eulerian description of the motion. So why do we call the description of the motion when we write it in terms of the original or reference coordinates, a material description, whereas if it's in terms of the current coordinates, we call it a spatial description. Well, the reason is because the point P at different times occupies different current coordinates, little x, but it always only has one set of original reference coordinates. And so by writing equations as a, functions, a function of those original reference coordinates, we're effectively labeling the material points in their original state. And so we're writing a material description or a description as seen from the point of view of an observer moving with the particle, as opposed to a spatial description, which would be written from the point of view of an observer who is stationary watching the particle move by. So we can now write equations for quantities. Uh, we've already seen that the displacement vector u is little x minus big X which means that we could write it in the Lagrangian sense as little x of big X and t minus big X, or in the Eulerian sense as little x minus big X of little x and t. They're the same quantity, it's just whether the coordinates that we're writing it in are reference coordinates or current coordinates. Similarly, the velocity is the time derivative of u with respect to t. And since u is little x minus big X, and big X is constant with, at, with t, then this would be the same as del little x del t, i.e. this is a derivative of little x with respect to t holding big X constant. So this is a Lagrangian definition of velocity, of a rate of change. And to convert a Lagrangian definition into an Eulerian or spatial definition, we would need to know big X as a function of little x and t. So let's stop for a minute and consider how we could derive time rates of change in a Lagrangian with respect to an Eulerian state. 
So consider some scalar variable phi, which is a function capital G of the material coordinates and a function little g of the spatial coordinates. We want to know the rate at which phi varies with time as seen by the moving particle or the material point. This is what we would call the Lagrangian description of the time rate of change. And so this is called the Lagrangian or material derivative. So the Lagrangian derivative or material derivative of phi would be del capital G of capital X sub capital R and time with respect to time or phi dot or d phi dt where we use a capital D in this derivative in the so-called material derivative. It's different from del little g of little x i and t which would be the rate of change of phi with little x held constant i.e. as seen from the point of view of a fixed spatial observer as opposed to a moving material observer. So we can use the chain rule now to derive the material derivative in terms of the spatial or Eulerian derivative. Del phi del t would be del g del x1 del x1 of capital X and t del t plus del g del x2 del x2 del t plus del g del x3 del x3 del t. Then using the summation convention, this would be del g of little x i and t del x j del x j of capital X r and t del t plus del g of little x i and t del t. In other words, the material derivative is equal to the spatial derivative or Eulerian derivative del phi del t with phi as a function of x i and t plus v j del phi del x j del phi del t plus v grad phi of x i and t. So you can see now that the Lagrangian derivative is not quite the same as the simple time derivative that a fixed spatial observer would compute. There's an additional term that depends on the velocity and spatial gradients of the scalar field. And so this is the relative rate of change between the fixed observer and the observer that's moving with the material particle. Now, the reason the material derivative is important is because the physical laws like conservation of mass, momentum, and energy apply to the physical particles. They don't apply to the position in space. Whereas it's sometimes more convenient to write our equations in terms of fixed spatial coordinates. So we need to be able then to convert between Eulerian derivatives and Lagrangian derivatives. And this is how and why we define the material or convected, convected derivative. So now we can apply the material derivative to acceleration because we're really interested in the acceleration of the particle. So V is little x dot of capital X and T and A is V dot of capital X and T, which was the second derivative of X, del 2xi del T squared. So acceleration, properly written, would be the material acceleration, the acceleration as seen by the moving particle. This is because when we work out inertial forces, the inertial force belongs to the moving particle, and therefore we need to multiply its mass times the acceleration as defined using the material derivative. 
So now expressing A in terms of spatial coordinates as seen by a fixed observer, we'd use the material derivative, and so A would be dVi dt, or del Vi del t, the spatial derivative, plus Vk del Vi del xk. So this is just an application of the material derivative to the velocity vector to get the components of the acceleration vector. Now there are some special cases of motion. A steady motion is one in which v is independent of time, so the velocity is only a function of x. In this special case, the particle trajectories coincide with curves whose tangents are the velocity vectors. But if the velocity is unsteady, that's not the case. So that concludes this introduction to kinematics of continua, in which we considered the motion of a single point. Next, we'll start to consider how material continua change shape by considering the motion of neighboring points and what happens to the length and orientation of the vector that connects them.